Hey guys, I'm Anna. And I'm Cassie. And today we are going to share our testimonies with you guys. And we hope that our stories of how God's impacted our lives will help you guys. And at the end of this video, we'll have some links to show some of the other YouTubers' testimonies. Hey guys, so this week we are doing our testimonies on our channel. And I'm going to share my testimony with you. So, I have grown up in a Christian home. Both my parents are Christians, and we always went to church every Sunday, and basically whenever church was going on, we were there. You know, like the perfect Christian family. But, uh, we, everyone knows that no one is perfect. So, I thought I was saved at the age of four, and I... I didn't really know what being saved meant. I knew that you need to trust in Jesus and live by his word, basically. But that's all I really knew. And I, still to this day, I don't know when I was exactly saved, because only God knows that, really. But I was baptized at age seven. And then from there... I just, just lived my life, went to church when it was open, because my parents made me, and I just didn't really understand what it meant to truly give your life over to God and let him take control, and I still struggle with that sometimes, but around the age of 11 or 12, I was just having a really hard time in school. I'm homeschooled, as some of you know. And I just hated math. Math was like the worst subject ever invented, and I don't understand why we need it. <laughs> I mean, I get like addition and subtraction, but beyond that, no thank you. <laughs> but I just got into this really bad place in my life, and I was just didn't want to be there anymore and didn't want to wake up. I just had a really hard time and I was having suicidal thoughts but I was afraid of death so it's kind of contradictory there but I just was in a really bad place in my life and I didn't really know how to deal with that. I would read my bible and you know I would read things like you know Put your trust in God, he will lead you. And I just didn't really know what that meant. And I'd try to, I know, you know, I'd pray to him, I'd be like, please help me get through this, blah blah blah. But I feel like I only prayed to him when I needed something. And you know, that doesn't always work. And God doesn't always give you what you want. So, you know, I got out of that spot, thankfully, and, you know, I got in a spiritual high for a little while, but, you know, with spiritual highs, you have lows, too. So that was basically a roller coaster. I would, you know, go to youth events and seminars, and, you know, you'd get really into it. Then you get back home the next day and you're in the same spot, nothing's changed at home. And so you don't really know how to go from there. And so I go to this camp called Camp Yuka, I know Cassie talked about it a little bit. And I've gone, I went there for like 10 years, from when I was like 9, 20, till I was 18. And in 2014, I was uh, 17 years old. And the uh, theme of that week was fearless, which is like perfect. <laughs> and it was just talking about how we can be fearless for Christ and how he helps us get over our fears and really, um, really to put your trust in him and our fear will disappear when we remember who God is. And so that week, I think it was a Tuesday, I put my faith in him. And I think from that point on, something did change in me. Nothing changed at home, you know, I still had problems. 
when you get saved, your problems don't go away. In fact, they usually get harder. But that's just because God knows how much we can handle. And he will help us through our struggles. And so... It was hard coming home that week from camp because, you know, I had all this great gospel stuff all week at camp and then coming home and going back in the same routine, you know, it's just, it's such a, what is the word I want to use? It's such a reality check to come back into this world and see all the things that are going wrong and just all the people not living for Christ who say they are and it was just really hard. We tend to kind of ignore it and you know when when we're at camp you know, you don't have your electronics or anything, and you know, you're in this atmosphere where everyone, just about everyone there is a believer, and you know, you have chapel twice a day, and it's all great, and then when you come back home, you know, you go to church maybe once a week, and you don't have those friends and that atmosphere around you, and it's really hard because you need those types of people around, and it's good when you have church members that you can turn to and get together during the week, but you know, everyone's busy in their lives. You don't have like 24 seven people there for you. And I really struggled with whether I was really saved or not. And I still struggle to it with it a little bit, even to this day. I mean, I know I'm saved, but you know, devil, he gets in there and he makes you think you're not. And I think one of the reasons, one of the things to know you are saved is when you want to go to church or read your Bible by yourself. And that's what I came to the conclusion when I was saved. I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this for anyone else. I don't want to do it because my parents say so. I don't want to do it because my pastor says so. I want to get saved for me. And that's when I really realized that, you know, you need to do this for you and God. Like, he is the savior and he is the king. Like, you need to be saved because if you're not, then you're going to go to hell. And you really don't want to go there. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? I have to do this for me and I have to do this for God because I want to follow him and I want to obey him. And uh, one of the verses here that I want to share is in Matthew 5, 16, and it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And that's one of my favorite verses, probably a, a life verse, I would say. And it really speaks to me because, you know, in this world there's a lot of darkness and there's a lot of sin and we as Christians need to be lights in that darkness and we have to be living by God's word and obeying it. God is really who he says he is and that the Bible is true and everything in it is true and it's hard when you know, your friends aren't believers and, you know, they do these things that you as a Christian wouldn't do, but we need to stand up for Christ and to really show people that we are different and, you know, it's hard for some people. I know it's definitely hard for me, but, you know, we have to be lights in this world and... Anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, back to my fear thing, you know, I didn't get over, I haven't really gotten over my fear of death, it's definitely 
I definitely have not thought about it as much because I know that God is all powerful and you know when I die I will be going to heaven and I know heaven is going to be better than here. I just don't like going into the unknown because I like to know what's going to happen I don't really know what's going to happen so that's why I kind of have a fear of death but you know I know God is here for me and you know he's gonna he's gonna help me through that and I think that is all so thanks for watching Hey guys, I'm Cassie, and today I'm going to share you guys my testimony of how I came to know Christ as my Savior. So to start off, I was not raised in a Christian home like Anna was, or is, and uh, my parents were both raised Catholic, but they didn't raise my sister or I to really believe in anything or go to church or anything. So I learned about Christ through my friend Abby and Anna and Anna's sister Shauna. They invited me to this church. Uh, camp called Camp Bayuka, and that's where I got saved. Um, I was 13, and it was a Tuesday. I don't know the exact date when it happened. I should have written it down, but I didn't. Um, but I remember the speaker was talking about, um, if you were to die tonight, do you have that assurance that you're going to see God in heaven? And I did not. And so I was very convicted and I was like, okay, I need to talk to someone. I need to get right with God and make sure when I die, I'm going to see him. So I talked to my counsel that night and she described being saved um, in a way that was different. Um, she first told me to imagine all my sins written out on like a chalkboard because at that time chalkboards were actually a thing, unlike nowadays. But so she told me to imagine all my sins on there. And to know that when we accept Christ into our life, he erases all those sins and he forgets them. He forgives us and he forgets everything. And that was just so awesome to hear because, you know, as a child, when you do something wrong, it sometimes can really stick with you. And it can stick with us even now in our lives of stuff that we've done in our past. And so when I think about that now, it's a whole new reality of, you know, I was forgiven when I was 13, and God forgave and forgot all my past sins, and even sins that I may commit now, or have committed, you know, between age 13 and now I'm 23, um, like, that's all been forgiven and forgotten, and it's so awesome, and if God can forgive my sins and forget them, I don't need to bring them up either, so that was really cool, um, so when I was 15, that's when I really got this like hunger and thirst to know God. Um, and it all kind of became full circle. Um, yeah, it was a Sunday morning and I was 15 and my parents asked, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, I want to go to church, you know, not a very ordinary thing to ask for. But so ever since then, I've been going to church and it's the same church I go to today. I'm a member of there. I was baptized there. I hopefully will be married there someday. I already have that all planned out. I'll put that in another video. Um, so it's just awesome. And, you know, I guess as what you would call a good Christian girl at that time, I went to three different youth groups. I was very involved in the church and I had just such a hunger and desire to know God more. I read my Bible every day. I prayed every day. It was, you know, things were good. Then I went to a secular college, and the first year it was like the same, you know, I still read my Bible, I got a different Bible for school so I could, you know, stay in the Word, and I met Christian friends, and I was part of this group called BASIC, which stands for Brothers and Sisters in Christ, and I love it, and it had such an impact in my life, and so that was all great, and all great church family everything okay so then my second year I kind of started to get involved with a guy who wasn't a Christian even though they say they are they're not they're usually no make them show it he'd not show it so I was young and naive and so I started dating him and this kind of happened throughout college I would date different guys not not a lot let's not get crazy so just like a few and they weren't Christians and it 
just definitely put that hindrance um, between me and God. So I would still go to church and I would still try to be involved and read my Bible every day, but because I was involved with a non-Christian boy, like it definitely put that hindrance on my relationship with God. And so that kind of went on for a few years or so with different guys that were all said they were Christians, but then I knew they weren't, but I just had this thought like, oh, well, maybe I'll get them saved. No, it doesn't work like that. And I had to learn the hard way and it was my own fault. There's nothing God did wrong. It was me being disobedient to him. And so recently, one verse that I've always known, but you know, you read verses over and over again sometimes and it never, sometimes it just doesn't click. So recently, I read uh, 2 Corinthians 6.14, and it says, get my Bible here, 6.14, it says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. What was I doing? In a relationship with an unbeliever. Okay, good job. Way to not follow God's word. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? And as Christians, we're told that we are the light of God. We're the light of the world. And when people aren't Christians, they're considered to be in the dark. Light and dark don't really mix well. So, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Don't date unbelievers. That's not the way to get them saved. And so finally, you know, that verse just really clicked. And I finally realized what a yoke was. I was like, yoke, you know, I get it means don't be together. So... When I was doing this Bible study, like, last week, it explains what a yoke is. And it says, A yoke is a wooden beam that fastens over the necks of two animals and is then attached to a plow or cart that they must pull. And I work in the dairy industry and I work with cattle, so the fact that I didn't know what a yoke was was kind of embarrassing. I was like, oh, good job, Cassie. And, and I pictured what it was, and I've definitely seen it before. And this devotion, it goes on to explain how when we're yoked with unbelievers, imagine having yourself and your partner, whoever that's an unbeliever, and you're both fastened to this wooden heavy thing and you have to pull this cart and, you know, it's heavy and you have to go in the right direction. But you have different views on life and on what a relationship should be about and just everything. And so you guys start pulling different directions and ultimately you're not going to go anywhere kind of self-explanatory and so when we're yoked with God ultimately before anyone else he's gonna lead us in that right direction and that verse just really clicked so well and it was just so awesome to see you know when that Holy Spirit really speaks to you and you allow God to work through you and to just explain his word it's just like a million light bulbs went off fireworks everything it's so great and so he also goes on to say in Matthew 11, verses 28 and 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And just with such an encouragement that, you know, I don't need to be in a relationship with a guy to be happy about anything. I don't need to be yoked with anyone besides God, you know. Ultimately, maybe someday I'll be blessed with a godly husband, but until then, I need to focus my life on being yoked with God before anyone else and letting Him guide my life. So, once that realization came to part and I was like, alright, you're gonna be okay, you can be single, you don't need to have someone, you're an independent woman. So, then, Psalm 23 really spoke to me and I've been, you know, hearing a lot about it lately and it really is true. So for those of you that don't know it, I'll read it to you. It's only six verses, so you'll be okay. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And it's so encouraging. It's definitely one of my favorite psalms. It's probably a lot of people's favorite psalms. It's very common. And, you know, it talks about how Jesus is our shepherd. And a shepherd is someone that, in this case, he looks after his flock, his flock of sheep. So Jesus is looking after us, his followers, our, his Christian followers. And, you know, even as Christians, we tend to stray away like sheep do. For those of you that own sheep, you know exactly how much they can stray away. I don't own sheep, but I've heard lots of stories. And the good shepherd will go after them and make sure that they're back and not going to get eaten by any wild predators. And so that's like Jesus with us. As much as we might stray away from him, he's always there to come and get us and be with us when we're ready to turn away from our sins or our troubles and repent to him and know that we need him. And we all have shepherds in life, you know, people that we might look to or things we might look to that we consider to be an importance or something that is in control of us. So for some people, that's a person, a significant other, a spouse, or even just a friend or someone that plays a high influence on your life. For some people, that's, you know, an animal, a pet. Um, it could be a thing. It could be a passion. It could be a sport. It could be anything. Your job it could be your anything. Anything can be your shepherd. Whatever basically has all your attention. And this verse, this psalm, this passage, it really just shows that we need to have God as our ultimate shepherd because he is our ultimate shepherd and he is the only person that will never leave us or forsake us. He will be there when we turn away and when we come back to him, he's there with arms open wide. He loves us and he cares about us and that is something that I came to realize throughout that time of being away from him and you know, I like to think like, no, I was still like a strong Christian but I definitely had one foot in the Bible and one in the world. And the Bible is pretty clear. You cannot serve two masters. God is the ultimate master. And ultimately, he will win. If you are a true child of God, he is going to be there for you. He is going to pull you back in. And he is going to share his mercy and spread his mercy all over you because he loves you so much. And no matter how many times we may stray away, no matter how many times we make mistakes, he is so just to forgive us and quick to forgive us and love us. And if I encourage you guys with anything, it's to trust in him. And even if you feel like you're so far away, like there's no way he's going to forgive my sins. Trust me, guys. If he can forgive someone like me, then he will forgive someone like you. And it's the easiest thing ever. And we're going to share some links at the end that can show you guys, you know, how you can come to know Christ as your Savior and the steps taken to do that. And we hope you enjoy this video and subscribe and share your testimony below and leave some comments or anything. And we love you guys and God loves you and we're so happy to share this video and we hope you enjoyed it. So thanks guys. Have a great day and happy Sunday. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed hearing our testimonies. If you want to share yours as well, go ahead and share that below. Um, also check out the links of how you can come to know Christ as your savior, as well as some of some other YouTubers' personal testimonies. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, like Kat said, comment below. And tell us what videos you want us to do next week. Thanks. thanks.